In the previous videos, we have discussed about the design considerations of the PET foundations. Now let us look into the design considerations in detail. First, we look at the concrete cover. The nominal cover for the PET foundations is given by these equations, which constitute the minimum cover and also allowance for the construction deviations. For the delta C deviations, TAM MN is normally used. The minimum cover is determined by these aspects, which constitute of the bone requirement governed by the size of the reinforcement bar. If the aggregate size is more than 32 mm, the minimum covers for the bone requirements need to be plus with 5 mm. The second part of the minimum cover is determined by its environmental conditions. Refers to table 4.4 and you will need to identify the exposure class of the foundations. The minimum cover for the environment conditions is determined accordingly. And the third component of the minimum cover is determined by time mm. The larger value of these three components will be the minimum cover. Next, we discuss about the estimations of the size of the base. Based on the prescriptive method, we determine the size of the foundations based on the serviceability limit state. This is the equations that to be used to determine the size of the base. The contact area of the base to the ground is determined by the width times the length of the base. It should be at least greater than the formula here, which is the critical loads due to the serviceability limit state divided by permissible bearing pressure of the soil. This critical load is normally calculated from the critical loading arrangement of the structure and it constitutes the GK, QK and also self-weight of the PET foundations. The factors of safety for all the actions will be equal to 1.0 due to the serviceability limit state. Next, we look into the design for the moment resistance of the member. First, you will need to determine the distributions of the bearing pressure onto the foundations. This distribution is calculated on basis of the ultimate limit state with the factor of safety of 1.35 and 1.5 for GK and QK respectively. Based on the stress generated by the soil acting on the foundations, you will need to determine the moment acting on the foundations in line with the surface of the columns. This is typically calculated by multiplying the resultant force of the stress here with its lever arms to the surface of the foundations. Determine the K value by using this formula. The moment here refers to the moment acting on the surface of the column at the foundations. Check if compression reinforcement bar is required or not. Normally, the K will be less than 0 0.167 and therefore the compressive steel bar is not required. Next, use this formula for you to determine the lever arm. The K here is from the formula here and this lever arm is in the functions of D. D here refers to the depth of the reinforcement bar from the top surface of the foundations. And the lever arm Z here needs to be less or equal to 0.95D. 
Next, you can determine the amount of reinforcement bar for the pad foundations. The provided reinforcement bar needs to be greater than the required reinforcement bar based on the calculations here. With this amount of reinforcement bar, you will need to check against the minimum bar area using this formula. It is in the functions of SCTM and FYK. The FCTM can be obtained from table 3.1 in Eurocode in reference to these two formula. For the concrete grade less than 50, you may use this formula. For the concrete grade more than 50, this formula is applied. You may also need to check the AS mean in accordance to these factors, which distinguish in accordance to the grade of the concrete. Having the amount of reinforcement bar defined, numerous reinforcement bar are aligned at a certain specified spacing. You will need to determine the maximum bar spacing allowable in the pad foundations. You may adopt this formula, which is in the ratio of FYK with its factor of safety for the steel, loading conditions for the quasi-permanent actions, in reference to the ultimate limit state, and the distributions factors. Based on the stress calculated here, you may refer to the table 7.3n on the range of the stress. Depending on the allowable crack width in the member, you are able to determine the maximum bar spacing in accordance to the stress generated by this formula. Next, we discuss about the estimations of the thickness of the foundations. You know that the thickness of the pad foundations is actually governed by the shear resistance of the member, specifically the punching shear of the column perimeter. You will have to check the shear resistance in terms of the ultimate limit state, which the Asia loops is to be multiplied with the factor of safety of 1.35 and 1.5 for QK and GK. The shear resistance of the concretes are given in this formula. The factor alpha CC is equal to 1.0. The partial factors of safety for concrete is 1.5. The required depth of the pad foundations is given in this formula. Your depth proposed for the pad foundations are normally required to be greater than this at the round number.